something's wrong with the balance between the traffic function and the other uh, social civic functions of spaces. And as we add more clutter, lights, controls, um, demarcation, uh, the quality of public life and the public space is clearly declining. Shared space tries to um, uh, tackle that by exploring some uh, simple but often somewhat counterintuitive ideas of how you can successfully mix the movement of cars, vehicles, lorries uh, with all the other important uh, uh, human and social functions of streets. Streets have always had to serve a number of functions, but two in particular. The first is the movement of people in vehicles, the transport function, and the second is the social interaction, the exchange functions, people understanding who their neighbours are, what's around them, uh, ability to trade, to exchange information and goods. Uh, and, and this image from Brighton in about 1830 illustrates those uh, twin functions very well, both the uh, movement and the uh, interaction. It was the uh, social, the civic functions of streets that tended to dominate our, our public spaces in, in cities and in rural areas, where it was a place to, to, to meet, to understand the nature of society, as well as to move through it. Even in more recent times, um, Images like this, where there's already quite a lot of traffic um, uh, using the street, you still see in these uh, older pictures a fairly uh, informal relationship between the two functions of transport uh, and, uh, and civic space. We're now in a little city of Haren, and Haren is a wonderful example how you can change your big main road into a nice shopping area. Already from the times from Napoleon, there was a big main road entering the city of Groningen, and along that street, more and more houses developed, and especially they became a little center with some shopping. And in the last decade, the whole shopping center was a little bit eroded by the enormous amount of traffic and the way people behaved. Uh, there were some bicycle paths alongside, and it all looked like a world of traffic. And in the local community, there were a lot of complaints about the traffic volume and the way people behaved. And it has been changed into actually a nice place to be, a nice place to shop, even though the total amount of traffic has only gone down with 10%. That's not so much. But the interaction between traffic and shopping is proven to be quite easily to be solved in this solution. And that's what you can see. It's a nice place to be now. It has a nice atmosphere. And the shopkeepers are quite content with the change that had been taking place in this space. So actually it's quite a big success and it's now an example that has been followed in many places showing that even though you have a lot of traffic in your cities, you can change it into a nice human area. To understand shared space, it's extremely important to be aware of contrasting characteristics of two types of space. We need highways. We will continue to need high capacity, high quality roads, streets, motorways, which link our communities together and allow us to move goods and people around the country. For such spaces to work well, they require certain characteristics. They are single purpose. They're highly regulated by the state. They're impersonal. We don't try and uh, make any human contact in them. They're linear and predictable. They're systematic. And we accept the role of the state in controlling the rules. We pass exams to use it. And we require simple, repetitive, and predictable signs and markings to use it well. But the more we learn about the public realm and what makes good public space, the more we understand that exactly the opposite characteristics apply in every sense. 
that the public realm does not respond well to government control and regulation intervention. On the contrary, it only works when it can be emerged from the much more complex cultural rules and definitions that emerge from the interaction of people one with another. So that the successful public realm is culturally defined, not regulated, it's highly personal, it's spatial, not linear, it fulfills a multiple of purposes, and it's unpredictable, constantly changing, it's contextual, and most importantly, it relies on a set of communication skills which could not be more contrasting with the simple uh, signs and markings necessary for the highway. You have two worlds. The problem is that they very often overlap in cities. And where you get overlap, you get the worst of both worlds. You get spaces which are very poor as public space and are also very unsafe and uh, work badly in their traffic function. On this crossing, all the lessons from all the other locations we've seen were being used to change a crossing with traffic lights into a human place. And the question was, is it possible with that amount of traffic we had to cope with on this location? There were 12,000 cars going by on the main road and they're coming 5,500 from the other road on the other side. And could it be mingled in just one place? Is it possible doing so? And actually it proves for more than three years now that it is possible. It was a more difficult design than all the other ones, but what we see now is that the traffic flow is much more organic. People are also negotiating their way through, and we have had hardly any heavy accidents, only minor incidents with some bicycles, bicyclists, but not uh, with injured people. So actually we're quite content with the way it works up till now, and it proves that the amount of traffic is not the most important thing, and that even on crowded crossings you can use the shared space principles. And it's very nice to see how people are interacting with each other, often in a more social way, and sometimes a little bit more, less social, but that's what society shows us. It's part of life. <laughs>